Hey friends, it's Hillary from Good Wellesley Dogs. This week I've been talking about how a leash is the most misused piece of dog training equipment because we all have them, but many new puppy owners don't know how to use them correctly. We are going to go over how to hold the leash and how to walk your dog simply on a leash with the right length. And to do that, I need to go get Katie. Okay, so here I am back with Katie. Katie is on the simple purple slip lead that I was holding when I first said hello. As you can see, she's got no other collar on. We're not using a flat collar. We're not using a prong collar. We're not using a martingale. We're certainly not using knee collar. We're not using anything except a simple slip lead because I'm trying to show you how having the correct length of leash is going to make all the difference in your walk. Now, what typically happens is that most people come out with their puppy and the puppy starts sniffing the ground. They sniff, they get on an exciting scent, they pull at the leash, and we pull back against the puppy. So when we pull against a puppy, it causes the puppy to pull back against us. This is called the opposition reflex. Your puppy isn't doing it deliberately. It's just something that we trigger when we have them on leash and they haven't yet learned how to stay close to us and how to keep the leash loose. Most of us know that we want to walk our puppy on a loose leash but we don't know how to go about making that happen. In order to walk your dog on a loose leash, you need to know where you'd like your dog to walk in relationship to your body. You need to know how long to have your leash and you need to know how to hold it correctly in your hands for optimum success. I have my dog on my right side. So what I'm going to do here is have Katie on my right. I take my left hand, I put my thumb through the handle, and that's just going to be to anchor all of the excess leash. Then I will take my other hand, I will hold the leash like a bicycle handle and drop my arms down straight relaxing my shoulders and allowing a J to form on the loose part of the leash between me and the dog. I'm not going to do it from the very end of the leash because that doesn't give me any communication with my dog. I need to have my arm down straight and let the leash be loose but only by a couple of inches so that at any time I can turn my wrist and give my dog information. Having the right leash length cannot be emphasized more strongly. It really will make all the difference in the world. I'll show you here bumping my dog. I've allowed Katie to go out in front of me in the way that many owners walk their dog. And when she is not at my side, I give her three quick little bumps to get her back into position at my side and walking at my pace. When your dog is at your side, similar to being in a correct heel position, you are able to have them follow you. You can turn left, you can turn right, they will be paying more attention to you than you are to them. And that establishes your leadership on the walk. Next, I'm going to show you the difference between a dog on the right length of leash following their owner and a dog being given far too much leash and simply wandering around and the owner starts wandering after them. So here we go. I'm going to give Katie the wrong amount of leash. I'm just going to hold on to the handle as many new puppy owners do and you can see what happens to our walk. She stops paying attention to me. 
she just wanders around, doesn't know where to go, and we end up aimlessly going around, up and down the street, around the neighborhood, without any clear path. But when I shorten my leash and hold my arms down and relax my body, suddenly Katie is tuned back into me. She is following me, she is at my side and at my pace. I intentionally give my dog some breaks while we're on the walk. I release them to go ahead and sniff and smell. Then when that's done, I get my leash back to the right length with the J again, just enough slack to make the J in that leash, not holding my elbow up in the air, not holding my elbow bent at all, but having a nice straight relaxed arm straight up and down with my shoulders back I've got the extra leash in my other hand, and now we are ready to start back out on our walk from having given my dog a break. The leash is loose, she's at my side, and we are ready to continue on our way with a successful structured walk. She won't be pulling against me, and I won't be pulling against her. Think of your leash as a communication device, not a restraining device for your dog. Mm -hmm.